Hey up lads and lads, Stanfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today, uh, not done one of these in a while, we are having a bit of a butchers at the FSV 830. I'm uh, going to look at all the systems and I've got a couple of recommended builds that uh, some people, well, Jin has sent me. Jin sent me all the missing parts of this because I don't have all of the modules for it. Because... Um, yeah, it's it's one of those ships that it, it has a lot, and I mean a lot of modules. I have quite a few, but uh, not all of them. It's there's like three in A, three in B, uh, two in C, two in D, and three in E systems, or two in E systems. Sorry. So yeah, quite a lot of modules to pick up on this thing. He's actually given me some recommendations. I haven't personally uh, tested these. Um, because I'm, I don't have the tech points, as you can see. I've only got 28 tech points in my Ox ships, um, and this is the only Ox ship I have. I don't have the Eddie Karen, so I I can partially run one of his recommended setups. So I will hopefully test that out. But he's uh, said he have a go uh, and giving me the um, the the build for it. So I'll be dropping that down in the description be below, and I'll be talking about its use and stuff like that as uh, as described to me. So. Without further ado, the FSV-830. Um, it's an interesting ship. With the recent patches, it's actually become a little bit more viable because strike fleets are now a little bit more viable. So running it within strike fleet actually works out. Um, the fact that you can repair and uh, make corvettes and stuff from it and put them into other fleets. So you can uh, sort of use it as like almost a forward... Um, operation base where you set it up near the front line of where you're fighting once you've lost all your corvettes or fighters say you can pull back dock up to this rebuild all your uh, fighters and stuff and then move your fleet back out arguably that setup may be completely redundant now with the changes to speed um that recently happened mostly because you might actually be able to get back, fill out your corvettes back at base, and then fly back out um, at 1200 cruise speed. If you don't even have a warp point, you might even have a warp point, which you know it's even quicker. And uh, yeah, the the build time on this is slow to um, rebuild stuff. So like with uh, rebuild times maxed and maxed fets, you're looking at 10 minutes for T800s. 30 minutes for uh, Pulse Nebulas, uh, Cellular Defenders, and Levy Nines, and all that. 20 minutes for Voids, uh, 25 minutes for the CVMs. Uh, the Red Beasts, oddly, are five minute build times on the FSV maxed out. So, I mean, out of all those, you're probably running your T800s, Pulse Nebulas, Cellular Defenders kind of puts you in a position where it's like if you've got to rebuild all of them it's going to take a long time and at that point is it worth just going back to base uh that being said you know potentially if you're overextended uh that may may be okay because you might have to sort of double warp if you're overextended and that could take quite a bit of time if it's not set up already uh so using an fsv in that situation might actually be quite good so let's jump in. We'll go through uh, first off the modules that can be uh, changed and removed and where you'd potentially use them. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we, we got after that. So frigates, these are the main construction uh, modules. So these will allow you to actually produce ships from this ship. So A1, we have the Frigate, A2, we have the Corvette, and A3, the Fighter. This will allow you to, in the field, produce um, Frigates, Vets, and Fighters. There is a little trick that you can still do. Uh, so say you want a FSV that can build Fighters and an FSV that can build Corvettes. If you put the Corvette system on and send that ship out, you can then, in Blueprint, swap to the A3. It won't change the ship that's out and about, but if you have another one docked up, you can change that to fighter production. And that's how you could have technically both of these out uh, at the same time. 
Bear in mind that if you retreat the Corvette uh, ship back to station, you will uh, it will get switched out to the fighter one, uh, or whichever one is was last selected. So do bear that in mind. Frigates, I'm not going to actually sit here and recommend this at any point. I the the frigate module, it it just. I, I, I can't see at any given point when you would want to try and actually use this to build frigates. You can build frigates so damn quick at base and have them out and they fly so damn fast. It doesn't really matter. So, okay, you got the increased production speed, auxiliary ship production speed, uh, the reduction in UE coin costs and the shipbuilding costs here. We got uh, adds max command points owned for auxiliary ship by A. None of these really matter. Uh, except the production speed if you are going down this route of trying to use it to produce uh, frigates. Uh, again, not probably what I would recommend here. Uh, I would almost certainly recommend running either the Corvette or uh, the Fighter. So let's have a quick look at the Corvette production system. You only get three productions here, uh, sorry, three uh, module slots. So you're looking at either increase in production speed Auxiliary ship production speed increased, and uh, then we got UE coin uh, reductions for shipbuilding and uh, shipbuilding cost. Yeah, another one as well. Probably the best setup here is probably running both of the production speeds and one of the UE coins costs for auxiliary shipbuilding. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter which one you pick, they are worded differently, but as far as I know, these are both uh, the same thing. So bear that in mind. Again, it's the same for this. Auxiliary ship production speed increased by 10%. Production speed of auxiliary ships by 10%. So the, these, um, as far as I, I'm aware, they actually do the same thing, but they've been worded differently for whatever reason. I would recommend the Corvette one personally and then running it within a strike fleet, but I'll get down to that build uh, a little bit later on in the video. Fighter production is more or less exactly the same, to be honest. These are all set up um, almost identically. Uh, so you can see only three, you've got double UE coins, double uh, production, best going double production, and one of the UE coin reductions. You've got to remember as well, whenever you're building with the FSVs out in the field, uh, it's also going to cost you UE coins and it's not cheap. Uh, so you need to make sure you've got your habitat and or the likes all set up correctly. Moving on to B, uh, I only have the fire, uh, the warning control system here. Uh, I have screenshots of B2 and B3, which will come up in a minute. So, uh, warning and control system. This is the back row torpedo hit evasion and missile evasion. It's actually like, it's kind of fun that it's got this stuff. We have sailing speed coordination, qualified fleets. We'll start with a sailing speed that is 80% plus 10% average speed of all ships. And the warp speed will be 110% plus 10% the average speed of all ships only uh, for frigates and the auxiliary ship in fleet, which kind of makes this completely redundant now. Uh, actually, this is completely and utterly redundant because of the now everything can move at 1200 um, speed after a certain period of time. Yes, okay, it might take a little bit longer to get there on some of the heavier ships, but honestly, if you actually look at the differences, I sent a recon ship, um, a good maybe like 2000 GM or something like that. It was gonna take about 55 minutes or somewhere around there to arrive to its destination. And I sent a fleet with solar whales. It took maybe 10 minutes difference, if that. So, you know, things like this, sailing speed coordination, absolutely and utterly redundant, ignore it completely. We have guidance range jamming, reduce the chance of back row ships and fleet being hit by projectile weapons, and again reduce mid row ships being hit by projectile weapons, reduce the chance of back row ships and the fleet being hit by slow weapons, and reduce the damage by the system by one and increase the system HP. Uh, you only have three slots, and of those, the only ones that are useful are the guidance range jammings for the mid and the back rows, uh, reduce projectile hit rate, and the one that uh, reduces slow weapon hit rate. Um, these two really won't do much for you at all. Also, it would mean you'd have to run it within a main fleet. And I cannot recommend enough how much of a 
terrible idea that is. This is 40 CP. It doesn't bring any damage. Its HP is not particularly great. Its back row, its tank's okay. Actually, its tank's pretty poor. Um, yeah, just don't do it. This is going to like seriously hinder your fleet. 40 CP is way too costly to put this into your fleet for 8% buffs at the end of the day. Like... The, this this is just not enough. If these were like closer to 20%, I'd say an auxiliary ship in every fleet, but not at 8%. Uh, so unfortunately, that's kind of where it's at. So going off uh, the screenshots now I got, so B2, the coordinated command system, increases torp, miss rate, uh, missile, torp and missile hit rate for back row by 8%. Uh, missile hit rate for mid row uh, for dawn standard agreement ships only by eight percent. So odd one that, isn't it? Um, I can't genuinely think of anything except the CAS that's mid row with missiles. Oh, and the AC seven two no, the AC seven two one missiles is back row, isn't it? It might be mid row. I can't remember. Um, yeah, not very many missile ships in Dawn Standard uh, Agreement, so yeah, it's kind of like a completely redundant upgrade. Slow weapon hit rate for back row ships, HP and armor, and system HP, same as the warning and control system. Again, not particularly great, and you still have the sailing speed upgrade and uh, fleet docking, which is required for fleet docking. So uh, you do need the B2 module if you are gonna use it as a forward operation base for rebuilding frigates or corvettes or fighters out in the field. So bear that in mind, you do need the B2 to make that work uh, as far as I'm aware. We then have the B3, the camo system. Uh, it reduces back row ship hits from projectile, increases torp missile hit rate for back row, and uh, it has the same strat as the CV3K. So kind of redundant again. This is one that you probably wouldn't want to run. Um, if anything, B2 is best in slot there. Again, you probably want the docking, if anything, out of that lot. And like I said, on, on the A, you probably want A2, A3. Moving on to C1, unfortunately, uh, another group that I don't have. I think I've got like D or something. Yeah, I've got the D ones. So over on C, C1, you have the engineering maintenance increase repair speed by 20% passive, two times repair speed increase uh, by 10% each for two of the modules, and two of the other modules are two times prefab module costs uh, 10% each and on C2 we have uh, we have strategic resource platform uh, you get it 60k more fleet storage uh, passive and then you get two time two modules with custom module storage increase 15 this is really good for the strike fleet to allow you to rush out um, corvettes uh, quicker you use these custom modules uh, kind of like you do uh, the the modules to speed up ships when you're building them in base. It's the same sort of idea. And then you have the ARG ship supply speed increase by 34%. That's how quickly it'll pick up custom modules when it's uh, docked up to a resource storage and increase module storage by 80%. Um, this is actually 80% of the actual cargo on the ship. This we calculated this and we reckon it's around about 250,000 cargo this holds, which actually puts it as the largest cargo capacity in the game. So it could be useful for data or angulum or potentially maybe even with a uh, like a mining fleet uh, just to hold more. So in not completely uh, useless uh, module. Uh, but that being said, you probably want the module storage increase for the uh, the strike fleets and the auxiliary sh ship supply uh, is a nice to have for certain as well. C2 is going to be your best in slot um, out of both of the, the C systems. D systems, we have the aircraft system. I will stick this in quick. I haven't actually put that on my ship yet, uh, which is the aircraft system. 
This gives me medium hanger, carry formation, I can carry two medium fighters. Uh, you get the increased damage of aircraft and UAVs in the hangar, increased hit rate and uh, of aircraft and UAVs in the hangar, reduce flight time of primary weapon cooldown of aircraft and UAVs in the hangar, emergency repairs and aircraft returning, similar to the um, series, and we have the target lock-on speed of aircraft and UAVs in the hangar by 14%. Probably best here is probably picking up the hit rate, flight time, and damage. I believe you only get four mods. So you're probably looking probably at the lock-on speed there and ignoring the uh, repairs, uh, which probably won't do much anyway. I wouldn't realistically recommend this at any point either way, though. Um, you don't want to be carrying medium fighters into a strike fleet because they don't really work. And... That's pretty much it. The only real use for this is the strike fleet still, so uh, anyway. Other than D1, you have D2, and that's the wrong module. Uh, aircraft system, why is it up there anyway? Uh, and it is the repair UAVs. So probably nice to have if you were running this within a fleet. Unfortunately, I explained why you wouldn't want to run it in a fleet. You get two repair UAVs. It's kind of crazy that you only get two repair uh, UAVs. I reckon at 40 CP, this should be four uh, repair UAVs. And at that point, it's potentially worth it. If you consider the CAS, which has three repair UAVs um, at, I think it's 18 CP per CAS. So at 40 CP, that's six repair UAVs. Uh, or it's at 36 CP, so less CP than it is to run this with, what is it, is it three times the healing potential? Is uh, a little bit silly. Uh, so yeah, I think honestly it going up to four doesn't even make it particularly great in that situation, but at least it makes it in a position where it's like you could consider running it with the other buffs going in as well. Uh, repair UAV effectiveness is obviously best in slot there and then the flight time and you've only got four slots which means you ignore the hangar armor which is completely fine to be honest with you nothing's really going to be hitting those because uh, you're probably not running it in fleet anyway so that is uh the d systems we then have e1 and e2 e1 is the area defense missile can target two different aircraft which is actually kind of nice i think it's the only uh weapon in the game that will target two separate ship, uh, so two different aircraft at the same time, uh, from a single ship that is. Um, and it's row wide, there's two uh, modules for aerial, which are the 4% uh, aerial damage, which are the 4% each, which is 20% each, so you get a nice 40% aerial damage uh, there. It's probably nice to have. Uh, you then get uh, a hit rate module, a cooldown module, uh, or RTB module, and a lock-on module as well. E2 is the Corvette dock. You get three core. Why? Why do you get three Corvettes on the vet dock on this thing, but only two medium fighters on the? These vets are like considerably larger, right, than a fighter, especially a medium fighter. Two medium fighters, but three vets. I honestly, I don't know what the devs think sometimes when they, they do these uh, modules. Um, it has damage mod, hit rate mod, RTB mod, a lock on, and a missile evasion. In the current meta, missile evasion, hit rate, RTB, and lock on is probably the way I'd go with that, ignoring the damage mod. Uh, this is just due to the fact that wing to SARS are pretty prevalent now, and light cone AA is also very prevalent and does pretty decent AA. Uh, again, most of the reason for the LCAA though is the intercept. Um, so yeah, the missile evasion will help keep your guys alive a little bit, little bit longer. I will be going through uh, all the ships again at some point uh, in the near future uh, to update my module recommendations uh, on each of the ships like I did previously and I'll be trying to get as many out as quickly as possible as well uh, just to get it over and done with before they do another massive patch and I just have to sit there head banging my face against the desk so E2 uh, is probably best in slot if you are using it in strike fleet so uh, bear that one in mind 
So the recommendations for within Strike Fleet, so you build your Strike Fleet and this is actually inside of it, it's not a reinforcement or anything like that. You would be running uh, your A2 system, which is the Corvette module, E2 system, which is the VET dock, and C2 system, which is the strategic resource platform. These are the recommended. Uh, obviously you need A2, the Corvette module, to be able uh, for this to work and it's around 80 tech points uh, and vet production. So not a bad little setup. 80 tech points is quite easy to get. I'm at 18, so and that's with one module that I don't actually necessarily need, which is D1D2. So I could, if I could pull that back out, I would, but I can't now. Uh, so I wouldn't even be too far off there, but I am missing, unfortunately, the uh, C2 module, which is the the ability to have more modules like held and increase the uh, speed and stuff of being able to get my Corvettes out. So yeah, it's not a bad ship and within the Strike Fleet we you are running A2, E2, C2. Um, you can send your Strike Fleet out, your Corvettes probably get wiped, but at least they got some damage off or they've held an enemy fleet down for a period of time which could be uh, a bit game changing in some circumstances. And then you can rebuild within fleet all your Corvettes back up if you've got enough modules. I believe with all of modules, it's enough to get all your T T800s back out like straight away. Uh, so again, quite useful in certain situations, but only within that strike fleet. And I believe currently that is the only, um, only place I'd ever use the FSV. The forward operation base type setup is like I said, uh, it's got issues um, mostly due to the fact that now with the, the speed changes you can probably get back and repair your fleet uh, and then back out. Even even in the, the idea of the strategic uh, uh, strike fleet, it's potential that you might actually be able to get back, repair and back out before uh, you could fully get all your uh, ships out of an FSV. And again, you can only have one of these in each fleet, which is a bit awkward, because then it puts you in a position where it's like, if you could have two and you could double up the amount of like production out of them, that potentially work quite nicely in a strike fleet, but it doesn't. So there we go. I will have a uh, build link thing down in the comments uh, pinned below so you guys can have a look at that. Again, thanks to Jen for chucking over uh, all the missing modules I have and for recommending the uh, strike setup build for it. Because, um, yeah, otherwise I probably wouldn't personally run it. Uh, have a fun with that and I'll catch you guys next time.